Welcome back to the junk room, everybody. It's me, the junk man, coming back at you with another video. And what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to take a look at coloring books from the 1970s. <laughs> they turn anything into coloring books, so we're going to look at 10 of the best ones, or you may say 10 of the worst ones. Not only are we going to check out the covers, we're going to look inside some of the pictures you could color. It's going to be a lot of fun. Who knows, if this video is a hit, maybe you can come back and watch me color some of the pictures. That could be a lot of fun. <sighs> okay, maybe not too much fun. But we're going to check out these comic books. Some of them you're going to say, I can't believe they turned that into the comic book. And others you're going to say, what? That's awesome. I wish I could have had that as a kid and colored in it. And then there's going to be one at the end of the video where you're going to say, what toy prototypes inside a coloring book? Yes, you will say that. So let's start this off with a coloring book. And it's one that's based on a toy. Yep. Can you believe they made a coloring book based on Stretch Armstrong? Let's take a look at that. Here goes the cool cover. It looks a lot like the box. But there's Stretch Armstrong along with the very rare Stretch Monster. Now let's take a look inside at a few pages. Oh, look at little Timmy stretching his Stretch Armstrong. Even has his legs tied in a knot. Who didn't do that as a kid? I know I sure did. And here's a picture of a Stretch Armstrong you can color yourself. Yep, you get a look at his crotch. How many little kids you think drew a brown eye right on the bottom of that picture? You know it happened. You know it did. Stretch Armstrong coloring book. Come on now, do we really need that? What the toy fun enough? Well, one thing we love to do in the 70s and I guess into the early 80s was watch television. And when I say watch television, I meant stay home on Friday night and watch the Dukes of Hazard. You couldn't wait to see Enos's new plan to get them Duke boys. G -g 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 it always failed, but it was always good to see how the Duke boys were going to get out of it. Well, when the Duke boys wasn't on television, you could have colored the Duke boys with the Duke's of Hazard coloring book. Let's take a look inside the coloring book. First, let's look at the cover. There's Boss Hog's floating head. I don't know where his body is. And can you believe this coloring book was $7.95? That sounds pretty high for a coloring book and activity book, I guess, if you ask me. But hey, it was $8.95 in Canada. And who is that girl with those Daisy Dukes on? Well, let's take a look inside. This is Daisy coming back at you. Howdy, boys. Yeah, you could color Catherine Brock any color you wanted. You could give her green hair and purple skin. You could do whatever you want because here she is in the Dukes of Hazard in the Dukes of Hazard coloring book. And here's Bo and Luke Duke meeting some friends. Probably some out-of-town moonshiners. I don't know who they are, but at least it's not Corey and Vance. Now, it looks like Luke, or is that Bo, already has his hair colored for us. That's no fun. The Dukes of Hazard coloring book. I didn't have that as a kid. I wish I did. Now, let's look at probably the strangest coloring book on this list. Now, it's based on Star Trek, and that alone isn't anything strange. But it has a storyline that goes along with it with... Them going to some kind of clown planet or something is, is very odd. Let's take a look. Here's the cover of it. And that looks more like Gene Siskel than it does Leonard Nimoy. But let's take a look at inside. Here's Spock and Kirk about to put on their clown outfit on this clown planet. This is so weird. I should do a whole video just reading this whole comic. It's very strange. And here's Sulu, I think. I'm not really sure who this is. And it looks like a page I would rip out and throw in the trash. And here's a clown police telling the Star Trek crew that if they want to hang out with them on their planet, they have to dress the way they do, like a damn clown. That's not the silliest, dumbest thing i ever seen. I don't know what is, especially when it comes to a coloring book. Oh, but we're not done yet. Because here's one I would have liked as a kid. Now, I grew up listening to country music. My mom and dad listened to Hee Haw, and all throughout the 80s, when all my friends were listening to Bon Jovi, Prince, Metallica, Color Me Bad, what was I listening to? Hank Williams Jr., Dwight Yoakam, Randy Travis. And I would have loved this coloring book, especially after I went to my first trip in Nashville in the early 80s. Check out this country music coloring book. Here it is from the Country Music Wax Museum. That's right. So are you coloring wax figures of these people and not the people themselves? Anyway, check out this cover. There's Johnny Cash with June Carter Cash. And yeah, I think that's Conway Twitty. 
and Grandpa Jones. And believe it or not, there's the man himself, Streambean. Let's take a look inside. Oh, the father of country music, Hank Williams. There, he'd be a lot of fun to color. I wish it was Hank Williams Jr. That way I could color a bottle of Jim Bean. And here's Johnny Cash with his wife, June Carter Cash. That is a horrible picture of June Carter. Oh my God, look at that. It looks like some kind of bird that had its nose chewed on. This is freaky. Uh-oh, watch out, she's going to steal your joke. There's Minnie Pearl. She's still got the price tag on her hat. Isn't that funny? And what is this? A, this wait, this is Connect the Dots also? This is two in one. And what a boring Connect the Dots. You could at least connect the dots to her hat or something while her briefcase or her suitcase, whatever it is. That's just stupid. And here's another question I have. Why is Minnie Pearl in jail? What did Minnie Pearl do to land in prison? I have to know the answers to these questions. Now, I said these was going to be in the 70s, but let's go into the 80s to look at one that I had and I loved. Raiders of the Lost Ark, the coloring book. From Happy House, it's the coloring activity book. Not only did you have pages to color, you had mazes, word searches, dot to dots, color by number pictures, cutouts, and more. Now, if you ask me, this is kind of a weird scene to use for the comic book. Out of all the scenes in the movie, why did they pick this scene for the coloring book? It just seems really, really odd. Let's look inside. Here's Indiana Jones at work. I know you're thinking, man, I get me an Indiana Jones coloring book. I hope it shows him at work being a teacher. Well, there's probably a lot in here to color, so I'll give him that. It's probably a lot of fun. And then we have this picture here. Wait a minute. Is this a deleted scene? Now, we all know about the scene where Indy shoots the Cairo swordsman, but in the original draft, he was going to hit him with his whip. Is that what this scene's based on? If so, that might be a rare picture. But there's Indiana Jones taking care of that Cairo swordsman. And let's look at one more. You remember that monkey? Yeah, here's the monkey doing his high Hitler sign. And I think he's holding his finger up to his nose to make a little mustache to act like Hitler. That's right, in this kid coloring book, you could color a monkey doing high Hitler and making a Hitler mustache. It was a different time back then. Don't judge us. Now, there was two camps growing up in the 70s. Either you liked the Brady Bunch, or you liked the Partridge Family. And for me, it was the Brady Bunch. But we're going to talk about the Partridge Family. Something I just, I never even seen this on TV. I always heard Brady Bunch, Partridge Family. And I know what it was, but to me, Brady Bunch was always on television. Even when it wasn't new anymore, it was on reruns on TBS and everything for years throughout the 70s and the 80s. Partridge Family, I never saw it on TV. If I did, it was very rare every once in a while. The Brady Bunch was always on. But let's look at the Partridge family, and I bet you get the color of that stupid bus. Now, you're going to have to ask your mom to buy you an extra box of crayons, because you're going to use up that red crayon just coloring Dana Bonaduce's hair. And there's also Susan Day. Who didn't like Susan Day? I mean, I prefer Marie McCormick, but Susan Day wasn't bad either. And I know what you're saying. You love Sean Cassidy. And here they are inside the coloring book, and you get a... And you get to color them while they're rocking out with the band. And you also get to color the back of people's head while they watch the concert. How fun is that? And let's look at one more. The mom from Partridge Family. Can you think of anything more boring to color than the mom from Partridge Family? Okay, color a picture of this guy. Well, being that we looked at the Partridge Family, we have to look at the Brady Bunch coloring book. And it's... It's weird. It's disturbing it's maybe kind of sexual let's take a look the brady bunch coloring book there they all are yeah i know this is a little older when sydney brady was really too old for those pigtails but they had to keep her in pigtails because of that damn song she just looks like she's trying to look like the girl from land of the lost anyway let's take a look inside now i know peter brady here looks very goofy and the dad's winking at him and it says, Sam's going to remember this date. Now, if you don't remember, Sam is the boyfriend of Alice. Sam's going to remember this date. I don't even want to know what they're talking about. What happened on that date? Speaking of Alice, let's take a look at her. Whoa, looks like someone already tried to color Alice, but gave up and just scribbled blue all over her shirt. And what does she say? Here comes the meatballs. Is that some kind of sexual indu or something? Here comes the meatballs. Hey, Alice, get your meatballs away from me. Let's look at one more. It's got Greg Brady. And he says, hey, Alice, I'm sure glad you know your meat man. 
this this is just this is has sexual overtones all over it, doesn't it? Why do they keep talking about Alice and her meat and how she's gonna remember the date? This is this is just weird. <laughs> I feel like I need a bath after looking at that one. <laughs> so let's get back into the 80s and leave the Brady Bunch and the Partridge family where they belong in the 70s. <sighs> what you coloring, Willis? Well, Willis was coloring a different strokes coloring book. And here they are, and yes, that's Mr. Drummond right there on the color. Get your blonde crayon out because you get a color, Dana Plato. Let's take a look inside. Oh, it looks like Kimberly fell down the steps. Mr. Drummond and the boys are running after her. And again, they already color the boy's hair. Why take the fun out of that? I want to color the hair. Wait a minute. And I'm not going to try to sound racist and everything here, but they are a couple of black kids with black hair. And if you color the skin, the color you're supposed to color it, and the hair you're supposed to color it, that's just, it's just got to look wrong. I guess, I guess you could use brown. I guess, I guess it's okay to use brown. Let's, let, let, me, let me get out here before I get canceled. And here's Detective Sherlock Arnold. Well, I guess that would be kind of fun to color. I mean, you could do a plaid hat. That would take up a lot of crayons. Hmm. Different strokes. Now let's look at one of the biggest movies of the 70s. Oh, I think this might have been released in the 80s because it's based on a movie released in the 70s. We're going to look at the sequel to Jaws. Now, I don't know if there was a Jaws comic book based on the first movie, but I do know there was a Jaws 2 comic book because we're going to look at it right now. Jaws 2, the coloring book. It looks like the poster from the first movie. Let's take a look inside. Ooh, you can color the shark. Look at that mouth. I don't even know what color you would color the inside of that mouth. Black? Or maybe pink? I'm not really sure. And look at the fish in the background. Looks like one little kid drawing. This looks horrible. And can you imagine having to color all the background blue because it's under the ocean? Whew, you're going to have to buy at least five boxes of crayons just because you're going to need five blue crayons to color all that blue. Let's take a look at one more. Whoa, how freaking boring is this? This has to be the most boring page to ever color. What? Is it what? It's some flippers. It's some flippers from a diver, and you got a cloud and the blue water, and it's on a pier. So it's a lot of brown. I guess I would color the flippers orange. The seagulls white. You don't want to. Never want to use white in a coloring book. And besides, if you color the seagulls white, what color are you going to color that cloud? This is just looks so boring. This has to be the most boring page in coloring book history. And that leaves us with one more. And you know I'm going to have to do this video looking at least one Star Wars comic book. So, we're going to go to 1977 and look inside the Kenner Star Wars coloring book. Now, they did a lot of these Star Wars comics. They're like four or five different ones. But we're just going to look at a page in a few of them. And we're even going to jump into Empire Strikes Back because it's got a picture in it that will make you scratch your head. Let's take a look. Here's one of the covers from the Kenner Star Wars coloring book. Don't really got much to say about this. Just wanted you to see what the cover looked like. Because we got to talk about what's inside. First up, I think it's a TIE Fighter pilot. You tell me. I'm not really sure. Why does it have a cone head? I'm not sure what this... Again, it has to be a TIE Fighter pilot, am I right? And let's say, for the sake of argument, it is a TIE Fighter pilot. This thing's all black. How fun is that going to be the color? Oh, let's take another look inside. Now, you're saying, what is this? Some kind of forearm, Zuckus... 3PO, Death Star droid all mixed together. Where did they come up with this thing at? This is from the 1977 comic. This is from the original Star Wars movie. What is this? Can you believe it? I know it's shocking. This comic book page is based on a prototype of the early concept for the Death Star droid. See? Look, it's the same thing. How did this end up in a comic book? Now, if that's not strange enough, check out this picture of Darth Vader in his TIE Fighter that you can color. Yeah, that's not from the movie. We all know what that's from, don't we? Take a look. And let's jump over to The Empire Strikes Back. Because I can't figure this one out at all. Yes, this is from The Empire Strikes Back coloring book. Help me out. I'm guessing it's Cloud City. It looks maybe like those orange cloud cars back there in the sky. But what is this? Who are these two people pointing at this guy walking up the stairs? Well, I, I, this boggles my mind. This looks like nothing out of Star Wars. How did this end up in a Star Wars comic book? Now let's go back to 1977 and look at one more. What a second. That looks a little too tall to be a normal Snaggletooth. Is that Blue Snaggletooth? 
Is this our only other reference to a blue snaggletooth outside of the figure that was released by Kenner? Maybe so. Maybe so. And that's a look at 10 weird, wacky comic books. From the cover to the inside. We saw a lot of strange ones there. And a lot of cool ones, like Raiders of Lost Ark. But then you got that Star Trek one where they have to dress up like clowns. And not to mention that Brady Bunch one where they kept wanting to talk about Alice's meat. This is weird. Anyway, let me know. Did you have any of these comic books? Maybe tell me about a comic book you have based on a movie or television that I didn't do in this video. And if you like this video, maybe we'll do part two. There's a lot of other ones we could look at. In fact, cutting this video down to ten, I had to cut out Shogun Warriors comic book. Why didn't anyone tell me they made a Shogun Warriors coloring book when I was a kid? Anyway, I want to thank you for watching. And as always, thumb us on all my content. Subscribe to the channel. We'll talk again soon. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> channel popping, though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.